Hi, I'm Francesca from Token of Love. I'm going to take you step by step through your exciting 3D casting experience. Open up your instruction manual and look at pages one and two. On page one, you will see a section on safety and how to do a patch test if you're worried about any skin sensitivity. On page two is where you'll find your contents. Make sure you check your contents and you have everything you need before starting your exciting casting experience. How long will the process take? So mixing time will be 60 seconds, making the mould is between two and three minutes, filling the mould is five minutes, and revealing the mould will be 10 minutes. Mixing can be a little messy, so work in a kitchen or somewhere you have a white clean floor. Do not do the casting where you have carpet unless you have a plastic sheet you can protect your carpet with. It is a good idea to have a table or work surface so you can mix and have your ingredients laid out. Make sure you and your baby are wearing messy clothes. If you have a helper and they're not wearing messy clothes, you can simply pop a plastic bin bag over their lap in case any casting gel drips. It may be a good idea for the person mixing the casting gel to wear an apron. Rub the baby's foot with the petroleum jelly all over, slightly up the leg and over the ankle. Make sure you get between those cute little toes. The most important part of casting is that the parent or carer and baby are both as comfortable as possible. Make sure the baby is in a position where their foot can dangle down vertically without any obstruction. Have a practice holding the baby's leg, popping it into the container without touching the sides or the bottom. Some babies can have a strong kick, so make sure you've got a good sturdy grip on the baby's leg to reduce any movement. Cast your baby while they're sleeping. Cast your baby while they're feeding. Bottle or breastfeeding is fine. For older babies, give them a snack they can hold and focus on. We live in a generation of smartphones, so use them. Pop their favourite nursery rhyme or programme on and set it up so that they can see it. If the baby is unhappy in a seated position, which sometimes does happen if babies suffer from wind or tummy problems, try standing up. Just make sure you have a good comfortable position for you and the baby. You have three foot containers. One container will be used to measure out the casting gel powder and the other two will be used to fill with water and are what you will take your moulds in. The mixing ratios will be one full container of water and a half full containing a casting gel powder. Pour the water into your mixing bowl, add half of the casting gel powder and mix for 30 seconds. Then add the remaining powder and mix for a further 30 seconds. Mix thoroughly to ensure all the white powder has disappeared. The casting gel powder will be a bright pink with a slightly lumpy, thick consistency. Quickly pull all the casting gel into the moulding container. As the casting gel begins to set, it will go from a bright pink to a lighter pink and once fully set, it will turn grey-white colour. If you see the casting gel changing to a lighter pink and you're still mixing, speed up and get the baby's foot into the container. Take the baby's foot as you practiced earlier. Keep a firm grip and don't let go. Pop your baby's foot into the container of casting gel. Lower the foot until it's completely submerged, including any wriggly toes. Make sure you keep checking the foot is not touching the bottom or sides. If your baby is awake, keep them entertained and as still as possible. Wait until the casting gel has turned a grey-white colour. It will feel rubbery and firm on top. This will usually take around one minute once the baby's foot is in the casting gel. If the water is slightly colder, this may take a little longer. Gently remove the baby's foot. It should slip out nice and easily. Loosen the casting gel around your baby's ankle using your finger. Move the container in small circular motions and side to side to open up space around the baby's foot. Gently slide the baby's foot out like you're removing a shoe. Pop the mould to one side and clean the baby's foot. Make sure you're wearing your gloves for this part. Fill your jug or mixing bowl with cold water. Empty one of your bags into the water. Make sure the powder is spread nice and evenly. Leave the water to soak into the casting stone plaster for one minute. You can now start mixing using both gloved hands. 
make sure all the lumps have gone and your stone plaster mixture is nice and smooth. When I'm filling my moulds, I always think of it as if I'm pouring a glass of coke or a pint of beer to avoid fizz. Start with the container at an angle, tilted slightly with the toes pointing downwards. Pour 25% of the mixture into the mould and run it down the ankle. Gently tap the bottom of the container for 15 seconds, keeping it at an angle all time with those toes pointing downwards. Add a further 25% of the mixture again with the container at an angle and firmly tap the sides and the bottom of the container for around 30 seconds. That just helps all those air bubbles rise to the top. Top up the mould until it's full and continue tapping the sides and bottom until the mixture starts to thicken. Once the casting stone plaster has thickened, simply leave it to one side. Gently tap the bottom of the container and flex the sides until your mould slides out. If you're struggling to get your mould to come out, use a butter knife and gently run it around the edge between the mould and the container. Be careful though not to pierce any of your mould anywhere. Gently break the mould using your fingers and break off small bits at a time rather than large chunks. If you have a craft knife to hand, this can make it easier to remove small parts of your mould. Be careful to avoid fingers at all times though. It is easy to break fragile parts such as toes, so take extra care around this area. If any parts do break, they can simply be retached with super glue once the castings are fully dry. For any mould that's stuck between those cute little toes or hard to reach places, we have included a wooden cleaning tool to help pick these out. On page 9 of your instruction manual, you have full instructions on how to finish your masterpiece. This will take you through removing air bubbles, sanding rough edges left around the leg and very importantly, sealing your casting. If you have selected one of our painted finishes, you'll find your paint included in your kit. This will need to be done the day after sealing your casting to make sure it has fully dried. You will need to do three coats to get a nice even finish. Make sure you apply each layer nice and thinly. Leave the paint to dry for two hours or more between each coat. Making the bauble. Make sure the hole in the bauble is at the back and you are using the front. Apply a blob of clear silicon about the size of a penny. Place the casting down in the position you have decided on. Press down and make sure the casting is sitting nice and flush. Have the name face up and rub all over with a card like a gift card. Peel the top clear layer away slowly. Your name should be coming off and sticking to this top clear layer. If you find the name is not coming off, simply stick the top layer back down and repeat the rubbing process. Once you have got the name off on your clear top layer, you need to transfer this to your bauble. Stick the middle of the name onto the bauble first and then work outwards, sticking one letter down at a time. Rub this all over again with a card and this should have now stuck to your bauble. Peel the clear layer away Slowly, always checking it's not pulling off the name. If it does, then simply stick the top clear layer down and repeat the rubbing process. You have two pieces of ribbon, one to make the loop, which the bauble can hang from, and the other to make your decorative bow. Make your loop first by threading the ribbon through the hanging hole of the bauble. If you're hanging the bauble from one of our lovely bauble stands, make sure you check how far you would like it to hang down. Once decided, tie the two ends of the ribbon together and make a nice tight double knot. If there's any excess, you can simply trim this with scissors. Lastly, pop a drop of super glue on the double knot to prevent this from ever coming undone. Next, with your second piece of ribbon, you can make your decorative bow. Wrap the ribbon around your loop piece and tie. You want your decorative bow to sit just above the hanging hole of the bauble. Lastly, you will find your crystal confetti. Fill your bauble with this for that touch of sparkle. Your tutorial has now finished. Thank you so much for choosing Token of Love's home casting kit. We really hope you've enjoyed your casting experience and we cannot wait to see photos of your finished pieces. <laughs>